What's up world? Today is a quick video. I want to emphasize the importance of tight joins. So important. It's really the difference between a piece of jewelry and a piece of jewelry that's handmade to an extremely high quality. The high quality one, all the joins are just tight and strong and invisible. I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna show you on this silver ring shank I just pulled from my kind of junk box. So I'll cut it open badly. I don't think there's a join down the back of this one. So let me just pull that open. There you go. See that now is horrible. So we need to make that perfect and then solder it up. Um, soldering a good solid join is really important and I mention it in pretty much all my videos when I'm doing soldering. Um, it's really essential to get a good join. It's beneficial when you're making jewelry because you need the minimum amount of solder to get it to be soldered properly. The join will be much stronger if it's not if you're not filling gaps with bits of solder. Uh, as long as you don't over solder it, a lot less work cleaning it up. So you'll just be much easier to do a neater job and the job will be uh, the best it can possibly be. So I'm just assuming you've got a ring shank. This, this is the same for anything. Bearing in mind the roundness of the ring, it's got to end up perfectly round. Not got to, got to, but it's ideal. You can't always do it because just because of the design of some rings, they've got loads of stones on the top. You have to do them a bit rugby ball shape sometimes. Um, Right, so anyway, considering the roundness of the ring, if, if possible, get it, keep it round. When I'm lining up my shanks for a good join, I'm looking from the side, down the top, and then this side, and then underneath, just all around it, basically, uh, making sure I look down at it. Both sides are parallel, just is it going nicely even across. This inner edge is an important one to look out for because it's much harder to get the inside nice than it is the outside. And also if one side is stepping down a lot and then you solder it up, when you file it, you're gonna end up with one side much thinner than the other. And it looks like a, a bodged up repaired piece of jewelry when you've finished, so don't do that. Make sure it's lined up really well. Um, still got my bad joints, it's a bit gappy there, but it's pushing together. I've got the tension on it holding that way. Um, one thing to mention is you may have one side twisting. So it's down one side and up the other. So you may have to grab it with your half rounds, give it a twist. Um, be careful when you're doing that. Bear in mind, think about what's going on up here. If there's diamonds set down there, like how do they look? If it's a repair, it might be an old piece of jewelry. Is it gonna handle being twisted? You can, I uh, can't find any of my tools, but you can hold it with parallel pliers, like right up to the top. So you're just twisting, holding this dead straight with your parallel pliers. So you're just twisting just there. Because if you held it down here or in your fingers, you just grab it that twist is kind of happening all down this side of the ring. It's sort of ugh, all down here, which might be, might be dangerous for some settings going on up there. Not ideal. Also, also the ring in general, if that did twist there, it's kind of ballsed up a little bit. It's, it's then a, a twisted ring, even though you might have a perfect join and soldered it really well, you, you twisted it <laughs> to get it in position. It's not, it's not great. So anyway, with your ring shank, uh, make sure it's all lined up, all corners, um, got that tension, pushing it shut. Saw blade, what I do is I place it on my peg, so this side is supported by the wood and this side is supported. See what I mean? That side touching, that side touching. Get it down as low as possible. Gripping it, finding a place where I can grip it between my finger and thumb and then Place your saw blade directly over the gap. And we're aiming to go straight down. Keep it straight and go through it. And ideally, do not stop cutting once you start. You're far more likely to get a good join going all the way through. You can rock the blade that way and that way. Sometimes helps. So I've cut through it. Still not a perfect join. It's still a bit gappy there. It's close enough to start sawing, but I would 
normally have filed it better than that to get it joined up, but you nearly always got to put a saw blade through it to get it perfect. So I need that tension. It's not hugely difficult to push that shut. You may come across some rings with a big wide band where they're just too tough to actually squeeze together while you're cutting. You may get times as well where the ring is really difficult if it's a really wide ring. There might be too much tension pushing it and the blade kind of grips, but make sure you lube it first. You've got to keep going because if you stop and then pull the blade out, uh, it can be a problem starting sawing again from the start because you're kind of opening up the gap again a little bit more before you go all the way through. So then your joins a bit kind of So anyway, best advice is just keep going and get through it. So a bit of a gap now, I'm gonna re-tension that. The way I just did it is the worst way to do it. It's much better. Bend it from the other side of the ring, like give it a tweak there, turn it around, give it a tweak there. And then that gets, keeps the ring as round as possible and gets those ends touching. Sorry, I should only give you good examples, shouldn't I? All right, so the join's not bad. Perfectly good enough for soldering, but if you loop it, uh-oh, there's a bit gappy there. I like it. It's not good enough. Silver, you get away with it. Gold, you get away with it. Maybe like that. Uh, platinum, no way. You've got to be perfect. You've got to use 1700 solder as well for a good join. All the other platinum solders tend to polish out way too easily. Okie dokie, right, so get that on there. Going straight over the join. Again, going straight down. And getting through it without stopping. So that should be even tighter now. Okay, so this silver ring, let me show you. Let's see if I can give you a bit of a close up on it. This is a two times watchmaker's glass. There's my join. So it lines up nicely down the sides. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes you can get lucky, you can get joins so perfect and so tight, you have to kind of touch the ring to feel where it is because it's not immediately obvious where the join is. Inside is nice, you see that? Sometimes you get a little burr. What I do is I, with my fingernail, I push the burr back over the join because I think it's a, a benefit when you're soldering it. It's an extra little bit of metal for the solder to include over the join. Okay, so this is what we're working with. Everything lined up quite well. Now that's going to solder up really easily with the minimum amount of solder and be the strongest joint possible. Kept the ring reasonably round. Went off a little bit, look. To show you how I do a lot, a lot of my soldering, get a big pair of tweezers. Uh, the last pair I bought were this pair, which were really long. I just cut them off and then used a grinder to sharpen them up again. Uh, but these are better ones. Rings held in your tweezers like that gives a nice little bit of tension to hold your joins together. A um, little bit dangerous with silver because it turns to butter when it gets hot. So just just the uh, tension of the tweezers, I certainly won't be putting any pressure on my fingers. Um, notice these two little slots. I want to put another one this side, but have two little slots, one horizontal, one bit of an angle. Now I can, I can push that down if I want, and then that'll squeeze the tweezers really hard together. I don't need to, so I'm just gonna let it in its own weight, just plonk there. And then that holds it in a good position right in front of me for soldering, because see it clearly under my lamp. Perfect position for soldering with my flame and everything, and uh, got that tension on it. So that's a really good thing for soldering. I recommend you put slots in there. Just two little cuts with your jigsaw, and um, away you go. I'm putting this much solder on, which is perhaps a little bit too much. That's better than not enough. I'm going to 
bit and clip across. I'm nervous at a silver ring because uh, silver's gonna bend out of shape. There we go. As soon as it floods, take the heat off. Okay, so it's pulled out the acid. Please note no hammer marks, no file marks, as literally as it's just come out of the acid. So, a little bit over flooding. I told you I had too much solder. Look, it's gone over the, over the join. It's nice when you get a nice little, just a little seam going whoop across the join. Um, when you're looping it, use your 10 times loop, especially look at all the corners. Make sure it's, um, the solder's gone right up to the corners because you don't want to start filing and buffing and then find there's like a little, little hole. So yeah, have you got, if you soldered your ring, have you got solder flooded all over there and all around the inside? If so, you used way too much solder. So what I'm gonna do now, put that on my ring stick. Check this out, metal hammer. Do not use your rawhide mallet. I really hate rawhide mallets and I'm gonna do a video explaining why soon. Let's give it a, Tap, tap over the join, and uh, if you work really neatly, you may find that that's all that's needed. Um, and then you can go straight on to these things and just buff away over the join. Didn't need to do any filing at all. And then you've taken out the minimum amount of metal off the ring and you hello, something just fell off in another room. Um, yeah, the minimum amount of work, so you're saving time, you're taking as little metal away as possible. When you're filing, if you, do have, if you have got a file inside, try to only file the solder away. Don't start spreading your file around the whole ring because you're just taking weight out of the ring unnecessarily. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you found that useful. I just cannot stress enough how important it is to have really tight, close joins before you solder, before you add any solder, get that join correct. Two flat surfaces together, they're not open this way or this way, top or bottom, just no gaps, just two flat surfaces together before you do any soldering, all lined up as well, so not like, not like that, like that. <laughs> and then, then you'll have, um, with the time you spend getting it all perfect, you're rewarded with uh, strong as join as possible. You need the minimum amount of solder so you can solder it quicker and easier. It's more likely to flow exactly where you want it to go. And it's just less time cleaning up as well, as long as you don't put too much solder on it. And um, yeah, and it's just a higher quality repair or join just for making things. It is just really essential way to go. So that's what you're aiming for, what I showed you. Right, thanks for watching. Uh, hit like, subscribe. Um, share this video, that's even better than liking and subscribing to my video. I just want as many people as possible to learn how to make jewellery properly. Okay, that's it. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.